Chef Buff Army, I'm back with another anatomy video. Today we're talking about back anatomy 101. This is my second anatomy video. My first one, chest anatomy 101. Well, it's real popular, getting over 2,000 likes. Uh, I won an Oscar and it currently is being adapted into a film starring Samuel L. Jackson. But today we're just talking about the back. And the back's really important because it's a lot bigger than your chest. It's more complicated. People say, you know, I train my chest and my back on the same day. But look at this. My chest, it's only half of my upper body from the front. Whereas my back is the whole damn thing. It's a lot more complicated. There's more muscle groups. What I'm going to do today is simplify it. Break down those big muscle groups. Tell you what they do. And tell you what exercises will target those areas. Sounds like a good deal. Let's take it. First muscle group, what do we want to talk about? Let's start with the lower back, the rectus spinae. So this is a muscle group that forms a Christmas tree-like structure at the bottom of your back, works its way up your spine all the way to your upper neck. Big function here is trunk extension. Think back extensions, the deadlift, the upper half of the movement where you're using your trunk up like so, that is your lower back. Very important to strengthen it, not only to prevent back injuries, and not only from a functional standpoint and from a strength, but as well from an aesthetic standpoint, I know some people will label the rectus spinae when you get really lean, it looks almost like abs on the back. Fairly impressive, very important, often neglected. The big exercises, as, as I said, I'm gonna be listing uh, isolated movement and a compound movement, deadlifts. Deadlifts are the kings, you know, Romanian deadlifts are great too. The one that most people will have access to will be the back extension. The one I prefer is something called the reverse hyper. There are many exercises. I only have enough space, honestly, to list two. But the rectus spinae, bottom portion, lower back, very important for keeping a healthy lower back. Next up, the wings, the latimus dorsi. Everybody wants to train their lats. They want to fly. They want to look like they got barrels underneath their arms. It actually does quite a few functions and usually for most people in terms of the areas that are targeted when it comes to your back, the lats get a solid development and the upper traps. When we talk about the lats, uh, they have three major functions. The first, it all has to do with your shoulder. The first is extension, so arm front being lowered like so. Think a straight arm pull down. The second one would be shoulder adduction. So from outside here, bringing it down. And the last one would be the medial rotation of the shoulder, not that important. But here's what you should know. The lats, big, big muscle group right on the outside, right? How do you target it more effectively? Well, what they've found in studies is that vertical pulling is superior for targeting your lats as opposed to horizontal rowing. That's why I list here, you know, under recommended exercises, I list one compound. So pull-ups or chin-ups, both work great. Wide pull-ups are really solid for your lats. And the second one would be that straight arm pull down that I was talking about. Pullovers are also great. There are many different exercises. You know, some people will theorize that the lats, because they're so big, there's different portions. You gotta learn how to target them. John Meadows actually has a funny term for the lats. He'll say that the lower lat, the bottom portion, to get that V taper, a lot of people will lack. He calls it the white man syndrome for their inability to grow the lower lat down there. They really are important when it comes to bodybuilding in order to create that V taper. So the lats, second group that we talked about, let's move on. Third muscle group, the rhomboids. Keep in mind when it comes to the back, there's multiple layers, such as your rectus spinae overlap with your traps, or your rhomboids are underneath your traps, and the lats are on the outside. So the rhomboids are behind the middle trapezius. I think it forms itself a rhomboid on your back. It looks like a diamond, just like so. Right, and its primary function when we say scapula, I listed a couple times here. That means your shoulder blade, the back of your shoulder blade, like so. It's the retraction of your scapula, that's its primary function. How do you target that most effectively? Rows, right? What are you doing with a row? You're pinching your shoulder blades together. Two exercises to help target the rhomboids that are responsible for scapular retraction would be a whole bunch of rows. So seated rows, uh, you know, bent over rows, pen lay rows. Rows are great. That's the compound movement. If you want an isolated movement, we're talking about prone shrugs. That's where you lie flat and your arms would be at your sides and you'd be shrugging back like so in order to target it specifically. Keep in mind before I move forward that the rhomboids and the middle traps do a similar function so they'll usually work in conjunction with one another. 
Lastly, the traps, the yoke, an area that everybody loves. Like I said before, the two areas ain't nobody usually has a problem training. Maybe they have problems growing, but they'll definitely train them will be the upper traps and the latimus dorsi. So the upper trapezius, let's talk about it. I broke it down, I, I wrote the common terms. The traps you could break down in three separate areas. Your upper traps, which are right here. Your middle traps, which are near your rhomboids. And your lower trapezius, which nobody trains, but it's very functional and very important. Let's break it down. Upper trapezius, it's all about elevation of that scapula. So, like so, up here, that's what your traps do. Now, how do you target that? Well, there's many exercises. Overhead pressing, so that's not a back exercise, but it certainly targets your upper traps. You could do high pulling, so high heavy pull. Uh, upright row would also target it. Shrugs would be the isolated movement. So think upper trapezius, elevating the scapula. If we move on now to the middle trapezius, right behind your rhomboid, look at the rhomboid function. Retract the scapula. What does the middle trap do? I wrote it in reverse, same thing. Uh, scapular retraction, right? So that rowing back. When it comes to the middle trapezius, rows are superior, right? So we're talking about doing, if you want an isolated movement, same idea, the prone shrug targets both, but also rows. So seated rows using a neutral grip, pronated grip, varying your grips are always a great way to target all the different areas. The last portion of the trapezius, I just said, is the lower trap. This is the one that ain't nobody does. If you got shoulder problems, you might want to consider training this more often. It's going to be depressing the scapula. What's that mean right here? Well, if I lift my arm up, I could depress it down like so. See, my arm is straight, but I'm bringing it down. This is not frequently done in everyday life. Most exercises will fail to target this effectively, but it holds your shoulders together solid, keep them stable and tight. What's an exercise for this? Well, I've been talking about it for a while. There's many, uh, actually, that you could do. But the most common one, a popular one, that has been popularized in the last little bit are face pulls, right? Where you focus on, you get a scapular retraction, but because you're bringing it back and down, you're getting that depression. This area, like I said before, is neglected. The very bottom portion of your trapezius. That's back anatomy 101, but there's a couple key points I want to make. First of all, like everything else, you have to be holistic with your training. You can't neglect your rectus spinae. Second of all, you have to work them on different planes with different movements. So your horizontal pulling, which is superior by and large, a great tip for your middle trapezius and your rhomboids, and vertical pulling, which is slightly superior for your lats, you have to incorporate both of them. You have to analyze where you're weak, most people just need to train more, quite honestly. You gotta analyze where you're weak and make sure you're not neglecting any area. And keep this in mind. If you do a bent over row, you know what it targets? This guy, this guy, this guy, and these suckers right here. It targets everything. It's the portion of which muscles fire with each exercise that determines where the emphasis is placed. Right, so that's what I said about horizontal versus vertical. This is a great general outline of the back anatomy and that is the video I want to hear from you guys what anatomy video do you want to see next post in the comment section below and guys make sure to like this video because a lot of time effort and many Boston spies died trying to fit all the shit on one board and breaking it down like this thank you as always for watching my videos if you're not a subscriber fuck you waiting for make sure to subscribe Chef Buff Army, I will be seeing all you guys in the next video. Train your back, kids.